Okay, this uh, this is going to be method two. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but I think the result is a little bit better. This would be my preferred method. Um, so you're still going to need, you're going to start out the same way, cutting your pattern. This, I'm not going through that again. You look at the first video, well, it'll be actually the second video. The first was on how to make the plastic. The second one is how to make, was method one. So, but they both start out the same way. You're going to make your pattern. You're, go I, you're going to print off your pattern. You're going to measure your head. You're going to cut it to whatever your head is. This, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do another 23 inch because I've already got those patterns. All right, so you cut it out and you use it to make a template on cardstock. I suggest cardstock because you're going to be tracing this a number of times. So this is half of it. You're going to cut, fold your hard cardstock in half, put this down, trace it, you'll get one. Then you're going to fold one of these fins down. I would trace another one on another cardstock. You could just use the one thing, but and make a, a second one for your the side for the one that doesn't have two. I call these fins, but they're really called horns. I don't like calling them horns. I mean, mine's kind of almost demonic, but anyway. So I'm calling them fins, sorry. Anyway, you once you have these, now these are the, the exact size, but there's no seam allowance on these. So now you need to make a pattern. And so you're gonna put these down on paper, add your seam allowance around the outside, and make a paper pattern for each one for and I would mark on it the number of inches. This is a 23 inch pattern and you need one for each side. All right, so once you have the patterns, you also need to make a trace a pattern for the lining. And the pattern for the lining is the same, the same template the same template but with both horns folded down. So you're going to put it on something on paper, trace it off, and add your seam allowance around the outside. So that you get, um, you'll have three patterns. A lining pattern, two main fabric patterns. And now you're still not finished with your template, that's why you need this. So once you've done that, you've traced off, you can cut, there's the lining. I'm using broadcloth for the lining. I'm using Bengaline or Moray. Bengaline is the same as Moray except it doesn't have the watermark in it. And I'm using, so I have, I put it right sides together so I'll get a right and a left of this one. And this what the right and the left are the same on this one. You're not lined up right. It makes it look makes them look funny shaped. Okay. Could be trimmed better. Um, I need to trim that. Oh, trim that a little bit better. It's not. It's kind of rough here around the top. And if you don't have it, if you don't have it trimmed right, when you go to do those rounded edges they won't look right. So take a little bit of extra time and trim it all out. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Otherwise I will forget it. I need a few, couple more pins up here. I believe I cut two of these at the same time and that doesn't always that doesn't always work out. Fabric um, 
dressmaking companies that cut, you know, several dresses at the same size at the same time have special machines to do that, and they it, the fabric is more almost like cut like you would cut a Cricut machine with a Cricut machine, so it does come out perfect when you're even though you're lining up several. Okay, so as I was saying, you um, so you have two two of your main fabric this, four lining, and two of the main fabric this, a right and a left, and then you're going to take your template and you're going to um, use it again. Now for this for this method, besides all what you had for the first, you still need plastic inserts. I did this and it's that video I'm I'm doing that video over now because um, I found when I did it that let me show you. This is the bread I made, and I really like it. Um, but I found that this edge, uh, I'm going to be using this foam. Instead of, I, I decided to use this instead of the plastic to see how it turned out. And it turned out nicely, except that it really needs a piece of plastic in this area here to give it a nice ridge here. And to also to make it more, I wouldn't say stable, but rigid, rigid here at the bottom. You don't need it up in this area or in the fins, uh, but but you do need it to here. If you don't put it here, this makes a rounded edge and it really doesn't look right. So, um, so I am still going with the plastic, but I, the plastic, you only need the bottom section. So I use the template and cut it, and you don't need seam allowance on this. So I use the template and cut it. Um, it's the, the bottom side. I made it a little bit shorter because even though I'm going to have this red ridge up here, but I do want a little bit of space on the bottom uh, because when, and you'll see why later. Uh, so I used, I, I cut it the same as the bottom part of this template, but at, and after I cut it, then I, sh I, I went back with a ruler drew in a straight line on here and cut off, I want to say that's a quarter of an inch. Yeah, I cut, took a quarter of an inch off the bottom. So I have four of those. But I still need these again because now I need to cut the foam. Now this foam I got at Joann's. It comes in, two, in the stabilizer section. It comes, it's a, a, it's a quarter of an inch thick foam. And it's got... <coughs> has cloth on both sides. Now, one side, the rougher side, which is this side, it, it ha, is iron-on. So this will stick to the fabric when I iron it. You can get it that both sides will stick, that it has iron-on on both, the fabric on both sides is iron-on, but you don't really need iron-on on this side. And that's a little bit more expensive to get both sides. It probably would be inconvenient because you couldn't iron you only really want one side to stick and therefore you'd have to protect the other side from being stuck to something but anyway uh, it's about ten dollars a yard you don't need a whole yard of it I bought a whole yard and this this was a whole yard I already cut a couple pieces out to make the other Beretta and you can see that I used only this much of it and this about the same on the other end so a half a yard would be good. You could get away with a half a yard, which would be about five dollars, five forty, something like that. Um, it's this is nice because it's soft. It makes a softer Beretta. Um, I don't know how much it probably be more comfortable, but I'm not sure. I'm not wearing this, but I will pass it along to someone and then get their opinion afterwards. So I need. To use my template and cut again a right and a left of this 
and two of these. So I'll be, be cutting, and so I'm just going to mark them on here, put them down on here, and I'm using the template, not the pattern, because you don't want seam allowance on these. Take it all the way over to the edge. And I trace these with a med with a marker um, sharpie the first time. I can't find my sharpie, so I'm using a. I'm just using a regular pen this time, which also works. But the sharpie made nice crisp lines. And what do you do? One upside down, one upside right. going to get a certain amount of waste out of this anyway because it's a really it's a weird size all right that's not going to work can't get close enough to the edge to get a good mark there's ridges in this and that makes it the pen kind of catches in those. Doesn't. and a left of this one. Which is the easiest, which saves the most. I think I'm, I'm going to be wasting, wasting stuff regardless of which direction this goes. So, don't know that it matters. Okay, so now I think I'm finally finished with the template. Let me cut these out. This cuts like butter. Okay. 
right, so now we have all, we can get rid of the templates and patterns, and what we should have left are four of these, four plastic inserts. A right and a left main fabric, and a right another two other right with 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 one fin. A right and a left main fabric with two fins. Four lining pieces. Two foam pieces with two fins. Two foam pieces a right and a left <coughs> with one fin. And those are all the parts that we need for the bread itself. Now, apart from that, some other things you might, you're going to need are some edge trim, edge cording, tassels, also called pom-poms. Um, you can, these can be silk, or they can be wool. Um, merino wool is, is used a lot for these pom-poms. And I use some merino wool to make this one, these two. This one is, this one is twice as thick as this one. Um, these are about two inches long, not including the head. So, well, actually they're about two and a half inches long. Um, and these do fit in that, they do fit in this area here nicely. Um, to me they look like a bad afro, if you're from the 60s you'll know what I'm talking about. But, um, this one is, this is too long, I'm going to have to use a rotary cutter and cut this down. You do that by putting it on your mat, uh, putting your ruler across to hold it in place at the desired length and then run a rotary cutter across so that you get all of the edge, all of it so it's straight like that, like this end here is straight. Yeah. And then, um, because this is just too long for here, and see how it, it sticks up too high and flops around. I'm a uh, shorter one would be better, but I'm not sure what it'll look like, but I will try it and see. But I can always fall back on the, the woolen ones. So, uh, deacons do, not deacons, seminarians do not use pom-poms on their, on their berettas. That's, it's a sign, your berettas often, like most vestments, the cassocks and the, the pre, uh, show your rank. So the Breda for a seminary, no pom-pom. Breda for a priest, pom-pom. When you get up to Monsignor, you'll get different color cording or bishops have different colors altogether. Um, I think Monsignors also have a different color pom-pom. All right, the cording. There's two types of cording. There's a plain cording, which is what I used on this one, and that's the preferred one. It's nice and smooth. And then there's this rolled one. This one has, if I can show you up close, see how it has ridges, as opposed to this one, which is very straight. Just there's no ridges to it. The ridgeless is the preferred, but this is also acceptable and used. All the cording has the cord on one side and a place to sew it down on the other. And when you go to sew it down, you're going to cut off the cord that runs through the middle, push push the cord back so that you can cut the cord a little by a quarter of an inch inside, and then pull the the sleeve back over it so that you, that so that that will bend nicely and there won't be any cord in there when you go to stick it down in between these, the fins. 
and I'll show you that when we get there, I hope. You'll also need, and again, these, these are optional. The, the, the cord is optional and the ribbon is optional. It's good to, this is grow grain, which works. This is velvet, which is better. It's good to put all around the inside, this isn't lined yet, the inside of the Beretta, hand sew it along the edge on the inside. It works as kind of as a sweatband, or it also gives it, makes it comfortable and stay in place and make it fit better. So, uh, and then if that can always be removed and replaced if it gets too dirty without having to take apart your whole Beretta and do the whole thing over. So it's optional, but it's a good idea. Uh, the velvet grabs better than the grow grain, but either one will work. Uh, and I'm also going to be using this time some, I got this from Dollar Tree, some double-sided tape. And I'm going to be using that to affix uh, these. The uh, with this one, I used glue, and, um, and that works. And I will still be using fabric, fabric glue. Um, but, so I will be using some fabric glue. And it's just leaking out here somewhere. And um, and the double-sided tape. Um, so now, putting it together. In method one, I did the linings differently. I and I, I'm going to try something different with this lining. Uh, I don't like hand sewing the lining at the edge. And with another with another. I've made three or four of these Berettas, and each one I've done a little bit differently. Um, but what I'm going to do with these is put them just so you can see this. I'm lining these up The important edge points are being these two corners and this one up here. Anything that sticks out below the bottom, if it's not right, can get cut off. So um, I'm going to just sew the bottom of this. I'm going to sew the lining to the bottom. Of all of these pieces. I hope I only have one. Of course not. Okay. Try this. Hope I don't have to rip it out, but okay, right sides together, making points match. Need a right and a left. This is the wrong side.
this one. Same thing. last one. put a half an inch seam allowance around this and I'm just going to chalk a line just so that you'll see where I'm going to be sewing. I'm going only going to be sewing this bottom edge right now. Uh, yellow chalk works for me. And I don't need to chalk all of them. I mean I I can use the markers on my sewing machine, but heck, I might as well do it. So we have the bottom sewn. Now we're have to, going to have to press these open. You really want to press it to the other side. because ultimately that's the side it's going to have. really want to press it so that you're going to have a nice edge there but because you're probably not going to be able to press it very well anyway once it's put together and if you press it now it won't be in your way but water in this. Okay, now, the last time I did this, I put the foam in, I, I put the foam into it, and then realized I needed to have the stiffening. Then I realized I needed to have the stiffening, and I ended up putting the stiffening on on the top edge here where 
because I'd already glued this down to the fabric. But what I find, I think this would work better if the plastic was up against the main fabric and this was then on top of it. First of all, this would be the softer side against the skin as opposed to this. This would be more protection for the outside of it and also it would give that a better ridge there. So that's what I'm going to be doing is putting this down, these down here. Now, I can do this all in one step and that's probably what I'm going to do just to make sure they all line up right. Um, so first of all, I want to make sure that I have the right side of this. Again, there's a rough side and a smooth side. This is the rough side. And I'm pretty sure the rough side is the, the iron down side. The top side that sticks when you iron it. So let me take a piece of scrap fabric here somewhere. Just a piece of muslin. Let's get this a little smaller so it doesn't end up sticking to my table. All right, so this is the smooth. This is the smooth side. This is the rough side, and I think this is the side that sticks. So let's put it there and see if it sticks. And yep, that's the side that sticks. So the rough side on this mine is the rough side is the side that sticks, and that's what you're going to get. All right, so rough side. So I need one of these. I'm just totally ignoring the lining. So I need one of these. This is the rough side, so I need this one. This is going to go down here. But I need to have this in here. Now this is going to be up against the up against the bottom. Um, I don't want that seam allowance in it yet. Up against the bottom. Then this on top. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to stick to this when I iron it. So that's why I bought this double-sided tape. Um, last time I used glue. And the glue, the glue, the Beacon's glue glues pretty much everything. And it did work all right with the plastic, but... It wasn't great. And I only need it because I'm putting it on the inside this between layers this time, so it's not going to move once it gets in, in spot in the, where I want it. Come on. Um, I just need something to stick it for, for a little bit. Very little bit. So I'm going to put a piece of I put a piece of this across the top and the bottom. And I could stick this to this or I could stick it directly to the Do I want to stick it here to the fabric or do I want to stick it to this? I think I want to stick it to this. Because I don't want that glue. Alright. And I'm I'm leaving a little bit. Remember I, I cut off a quarter of an inch at the bottom? I'm leaving that quarter of an inch. Um, I'm leaving that quarter of an inch so that I can sew there later without having to go through the plastic. All right, so now I'm going, I'm putting that up against the seam allowance. I'm not sure if my iron's in your way. 
Can you see anything here? All right, so there's the seam allowance. I'm not, just so you can see what, this is the edge. This is the edge of where I've sewn. I'm just gonna put some pins to push that out of the way. I'm putting this up against that edge. Remember, I cut this exactly the same size. Now I want to make sure there's enough seam allowance around all the all the edges. Matching up the notch on this side, the notch on this side. All right, right there. Okay. I'm going to try and do it through, through the foam, but I don't think that's going to work. I could better pin it. It wants to move anyway. Okay, so. Make sure I'm back where I'm supposed to be here. If you want to do any trimming, you need to do it now, because otherwise it's going to be sewn down. all the way around. I'm going to turn it over to this side. And this is not quite... This edge is fine, but this edge just seems to be up a little. That's better. It's hard pinning there because that's where the plastic is. Um, the card got full. Okay, so where's the other left? Okay, so first we take a piece of this. We're putting this a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. So Taking a piece of double-sided tape, running it across the top and the bottom here.
And I'm going to stick this this is the rough side so this is the iron side I'm going to stick this down to this a quarter of an inch up from the bottom out of the way here and line this up with this with the sewing line on the bottom and I'm checking I'm gonna put some pins to hold this right now the plastic you can pin through that plastic but it's not fun all right what I'm checking for is to see that I have how much seam allowance I have around all the edges. I need a little, I need to trim up here a little bit. curves to be nice. I can see that I didn't come all the way in. And sometimes you get the paper, you get the fabric, but you don't get the foam. Alright. So I'm going to flip this over. To the seam allowance, but it doesn't feel like it's up to the seam allowance. Okay, but it is. Let's push the seam allowance out of the way for now. Hit it with the iron. take the pins out and hit it again because I'll have pin marks. Let's check this. Okay. Now you can feel where the plastic ends and you can see the little ridge there. And that's fine. Um, it's not sticking here because there's not enough of this to to want to to stick. I can try it again. Right, there's only a quarter of an inch down there. Doesn't give it much to grab onto. But yeah, that seems to be stuck. All right, so that's two. Quarter of an up, inch up from the bottom. And then Do need to. I can see the line here, so I need to trim a little bit of this. And uh, trim a little on 
this side too. Cutting out the big shears is fine, but you should probably go back with the little ones and make sure you got it right. Okay, let's see. All right, so <coughs> this should be down at the bottom. And I should have seam allowance around all the sides here. And this point should be at this point. Oops. There. Okay, come back down here. Everybody where you're supposed to be. And then hit you with the iron. Okay. Now, the next step is to put the pieces together, but we're only going, we're not going to be sewing any of the fins down from here up or not, but we can, we're going to be sewing the sides here as well as the, all the sides of the lining. So the ones you need to start with, I mean, you could have marked these, but I found after a while I didn't even need to do that. You know that these two have to meet each other. So you start with these two. Put them on top of each other. Line up. Line up this, this part here. Pin it above the plastic. And now your seam allowance you're going to want to come to this side. If you sew it, if you come down here and sew this this way, the lining is going to go to the inside. It will pull it back up. So it you don't need to sew it up here if you I mean, you can do that. It's only going to catch a little at the edge, so it's not going to really help much. And because it might make it too bulky, I'm just going to leave it and flat like that. All right, so now I want to match up these corners. And now, you're only sewing this side. This is going to get attached to another piece. So you're going to go all the way down one side here to the point. And stop. Now you can sew this or you can go ahead and attach this to the next piece. Um, I think just because I want these to lay flat, I'm going to go ahead and sew this and then attach the next one. And then, well, I can go ahead and attach two of these, so two at the same time. All right, so again, make sure we did that right. So right sides together. This seam meeting, the, the bottom seams meeting. Your top, your top points. Let me put this aside. So, your bottom seams meeting your top 
points meeting, your, your points on the sides meeting, and then you want to pin it together. So right above the plastic here is where I'm going to pin it. And this is where I'm going to stop, right at this, this side here. And I'm going to pin, line these up here. these and this and this and then I'm going to sew that and I'm going to sew this and then I'm going to come back and connect these two pieces together okay all right let's see All right, so now I've I sewed these two edges from here to here. I'm, I'm going to clip this right here, not all the way in. Again, you know, when you clip curves, you... And I'm going to cut off the excess of here. These aren't done yet. This. So now, next we want to attach. Again, um, I'm going to cut off the excess fabric at this point right here. I don't have to, but. And I'm going to clip this notch right here not all the way. Now I'm also going to look in these seams. I want to make sure that there is no plastic in the seam because if there is plastic in that seam it's going to be hard. To work with. Um, I didn't see any. I didn't feel any but um, and it shouldn't be. It should be inside. I made sure that when I sewed this, I did not go onto the foam. I sewed right at the edge of the foam. Alright, so now we're gonna, we'll open these two up and these two up and put them together and sew. So this, this edge from here to the point and this edge from here to the point. So right now I'll line up these two. And again, I want to make sure I do it better, seeing it, see it better this way. I want to make sure my notches meet. There's not much of a notch here at the top, but you can see where it's supposed to be. So now I'm going to pin. Black is so easy to see, don't you know? Right, so I'm going to pin from. I'm going to pin this, but I'm actually going to start sewing here. At this, well, this is where the notch is, and I'm going to put the put these two seams together here. going to have four points meeting there so um, right. and then I'm 
I'm going to do the same with this side. Make sure that these are all meeting where they should. There's the notch. and pin this and again out to the point this already has one pin there so put another one over here and now I'm going to sew these two. I could start here sew all the way down and all the way up but I'm going to stow from here to the point and then go back from here to the point. Why? I just want to make sure that I don't get pu puckers or it, it pulling. So I'm going to sew the right, same direction on both sides. This is all recording because I don't want to do this all over again. I don't know how many times I've done this just because I keep something goes wrong with the recording. Okay, so. Clip off the extra fabric on the corners of the lining. And that includes the top up here. Okay, so you want these seams here. Half of it to go on one side, and there's plastic under here, so you just pin it the top where the foam is, and then pull this over the plat, pull, pull this over and pin this side too. Later, when we as we're gluing this, we'll put some put some glue in here. Don't have to glue the whole edge; you just need to tack it so that it doesn't slip around to the other side. Alright, so that's one. So, I'll start with this one. Okay, so I've pinned the... I've pinned the... Uh, seam to both sides. And now I'm going to I'm going to do this edge here. And I'm going to have to clip that curve. And I'm going to clip it. I'm going to clip it first, so because it's harder to clip once the glue is in, the, in place. Remember, you don't want to clip, and you want to clip small here. You don't want a lot of little ridges. This is a sharp curve, so clip, clip close. I'm talking about five eighths half an inch closer, a little more than a quarter, not an eighth, not a quarter. A quarter wouldn't hurt. Do I clip that one now? 
and you're going to clip from the point, from the notch at the top, to where you've already clipped it here. Now, and I'm going to take this pin out. I'm going to start here with this edge. I'm going to run some, some of this along in here and push it down. Use the popsicle stick so it doesn't get all over my fingers. And then I'm going to run, run it around here. Last time I ran it on the fabric and that was very messy. I think even though it may stick out a little bit here, this dries fast enough. You just don't want to go move on to the next section until this is dry as long as you're putting it on here. Okay, so there, there. to hold it a few seconds. Watch your edge and try to not get any points in it. It's, the cable will take care of that. The cord, cord will take care of that. But if you're not putting cord, it will look, it's the word, funky if you don't. If you have these little points all over the place. I've got two points here and I don't want those. I'm gonna pull it need to pull it down a little tighter in those two spots. Gluing gluing smaller sections will help help. I think I'm gonna not try and do the whole thing at once, just do half of it and then do the next half. Alright, so that's pretty, that's already dry. And if I need to, I can go back and put some more in there. Now, this is a straight edge. This should not be, this should not be an issue. Let me start with this edge here. second until it dries. Okay, I think it's if you pull it too tight you're gonna get your seat your side seams uh, twisted. Just will that matter? It's hard to see it and I'm standing right on top of it. Alright, 
All right, so again, pulling this up. I, I liked the idea of putting a pin in to hold that while I use the popsicle stick to push it around. This dries fast. Got to work fast. If you glue, if you put the glue down in a large, large section, you're going to have to work real fast. Not as fast as super glue, but fast. Not instantaneous. You need to stick some more glue under the edge. You can do that. I'll let this dry. I think it's pretty straight. It's hard to see it because there is another one underneath it, but. looks like. Alright, so if you find some spots where it's not sticking, come back with some glue. And don't be afraid to put pins in it. Now this is going to get sewn, so this is really just a basting, and yes you can hand sew this, and probably wouldn't be hard to hand sew this um, through the foam here, you don't want to go all the way through to the other side because then you'll, though even if your stitches were there, again you're sewing you put in cording and sewing, it's probably not going to be noticeable. Just want a little more in here. There's a ridge there that I don't like. some pins just to kind of hold it. The ones that I just glued. Alright, and I'm going to do this one. Yeah, I'm going to start with the same thing. The, the seam allowance in here. <laughs> 